George Caleb Bingham, the Missouri artist, was born in 1811, 35 years after the writing of the Declaration of Independence and 10 years before Missouri became the 24th state in the Union. He grew up along the Missouri River in Arrow Rock. A trip east exposed the young Bingham to a style of portraiture known as genre painting. Genre painting was popular in pre-Civil War America. As a movement, it focused on scenes of everyday life and everyday people. Paintings portray different types of Americans. George Bingham's earliest subjects were Westerners and river boatmen. His work was well received throughout the country. While many genre painters originated in rural areas and later moved to the cities to be among their middle-class patrons, George Bingham stayed in Missouri. While painting represented more about American daily life, the presidency of Andrew Jackson represented the political rise of the common American. The Jacksonian age represented a shift from the traditional emphasis on wealthy families and prominent political and social leaders. Everywhere, a growing middle class was evident in the newspapers, in popular literature, in traveling stage productions, and in the visual arts. George Caleb Bingham was 23 years of age when he painted this self-portraiture. He had no formal training as an artist or exposure to the fine arts by this time. Bingham omits the usual symbols that represent an artist in a painting, such as a palette or paintbrushes. Instead, he portrays himself in a straightforward style as a member of the growing middle class of entrepreneurs in Missouri. Bingham would become successful as a self-made artist. At the time when the demand for portraits was prominent among Missourians, East Coast painters did not make many trips to the far west. However, Bingham remained in Missouri, supplied his services to this increased demand, and made affordable prints of his paintings. His self-portrait served as an example of his skills and talents as an artist. The Mississippi River was an unpredictable waterway in the American West, and the flat boatmen who sailed up and down the river had a reputation as threatening, violent, and crude. But Bingham portrays them here as carefree, rosy-cheeked laborers. The crew is lively, and one man is in good spirits, waving a red scarf. Painted 10 years before the Jolly Flatboatmen, these raftsmen are enjoying a game of cards during their free time. The men are not vicious, but friendly. They do not conform to the standard image of uncivilized, violent, often drunken characters. As a politician and artist, Bingham knew perception was important in luring trade and commerce to Missouri, so he portrays his workers as civilized, competent, and congenial people who can uphold a democratic system. The election series consists of three oil-on-canvas paintings showing the stages of the American democratic process. Painted over the span of four years, Bingham knew the electoral process firsthand because he was once a Whig Party member of the Missouri Legislature. The central theme of Bingham's stump-speaking painting is campaigning, the first stage of the democratic process. The setting is a rural location given the barn in the background, but the message is national in scope just as well. The white-coated, gray-haired gentleman speaking, making points on his hand, is Erasmus Darwin Sappington, Bingham's real-world political opponent in 1846. In that real-world election, Bingham won by three votes. However, Sappington contested that election and won the legislative seat instead. Behind the stump-speaking Democrat is the opponent, small in stature, but making up for it by taking copious notes to soon refute the speaker's arguments. The large gentleman seated to the opponent's right is Meredith Miles Marmaduke, 
an influential member of the Democrat Party. To the far right, illuminated in a white coat and top hat, is Claiborne Fox Jackson, a member of the Missouri Senate. The crowd is made up of men from all walks of life. No women are present. Some listen to the speaker. Others occupy their time at a watermelon wagon. Some are engaged in conversation or struggling to stay awake. County Election was actually the first painting in Bingham's election series. He had high hopes the project would lead to his family's financial independence. The painting represents the second phase in the democratic process, the election. The scene captures a large crowd of men at a polling place. Campaigning continues even around the ballot box. A new citizen, an Irish immigrant, verbally declares his vote just as a member of the American Revolution generation descends the steps. All around is rational discussion that makes democracy possible. However, not all voters take their civic responsibility seriously. A drunken man is unable to stand, but nonetheless is taken to the ballot box. A man sits on a bench after having clearly lost in a brawl. And two boys play a risky knife game. Bingham's message is this. Democracy not only requires responsible informed voters, but it must also accept the fact that others will act to the contrary. Atop the painting is a blue banner inscribed with the state of Missouri's motto, the will of the people, the supreme law. Bingham is celebrating his confidence in the popular and civil style of politics throughout the state and the country. The verdict of the people is the last in George Bingham's election series. The setting is a small town near a courthouse as a proud American flag flaps high in the background. Ballots have been counted. A winner is proclaimed. The crowd is large and diverse. Farmers, laborers, merchants, children, politicians, immigrants, veterans, women, and slaves. Emotions on their faces are diverse too. Voters are happy, argumentative, serious-minded, confused, satisfied, or disappointed with the electoral outcome. A jubilant man waves his kerchief, an inebriated man is sprawled on the ground. Women, who were not allowed to vote then, are merely observers and relegated to the distant balcony. An African-American slave represents another group lacking voting rights. Bingham uses symbolism here with the women who are temperance advocates and the slave to remind viewers that both drunkenness and slavery are perilous to individual freedom and societal happiness. Beginning in 1776, the United States of America was founded on the principle that the people give the government its political power and can be trusted to rule and govern themselves. That democratic utopianism is embodied in the Declaration of Independence and in the United States Constitution, written over 200 years ago. The American democratic process has developed from being limited to a small number of white male landowners to presently including any adult citizen 18 years of age or older. George Caleb Bingham's paintings are the embodiment of the early Republic's beliefs that at the heart of the American democratic process, its people are good and shall long endure. For more information about George Caleb Bingham, visit the St. Louis Art Museum at slam.org.